This is KC2. To identify the domain in number 12, you have to recall that the word domain refers to the set of x's. So your answer is number, <laughs> number D, letter D. In number 13, you are asked to identify which relationship represents a function. In this case, you have to remember another word, function. A function is special. It has no repeating x's. So let's take a look at the options we have. In letter A, I see two repeating sixes. In letter B, I see two repeating nines. In letter C, I see no repetition. Perfect. That's our answer. All right. Number 14, we're given this function. What is the corresponding range value for the domain value of 6? Wow, that's a lot of words. Let's translate. So we recalled in the previous problems that domain refers to your x's. Your range, on the other hand, refers to your dependent variable, to your y's, to f of x. It's all the same thing right there. Wow, that did not turn out pretty. One more time. Okay, so what this problem is actually asking us to do is to find f of x when we plug in 6. Well, let's do that. I'm going to replace this x with the 6. Okay, f of x equals negative 3 times 6 minus 3. And when we solve that, we get negative 21. Number 15. We have this following function, and it gives us the distance d of t, the average plane travels in t hours. Identify the domain of, uh, for this situation. Okay. First, domain represents your x's. In this case, we have t's, and our domain is hours. Okay, so let's think about this. I'm going to cross off letter D right away because we can determine hours. That is something we can measure. The next one that jumps out at me is letter B. I see a negative in there. Time can't be negative. Now I'm between A and C. The only 400 I see in this problem is a number that's being multiplied by the t hours. Nothing else says that 400 is the largest amount of, the longest amount of time that we can travel. Time in itself is infinite and it hasn't stopped yet. Hopefully it doesn't. Uh, so letter A is our answer. Let's continue to the next page. I'm going to zoom in. Or, you know, try to zoom in. There we go. All right, so we're determining the average rate of change from point A to point B. Recall that your average rate of change is the change in Y's over your change in X's. Our Y's are on the vertical, so let's see the change vertically between A and B. Well, vertically, we go down 5, then horizontally, we go over 50. Okay, so my average rate of change is negative 5 over 50. That's not in my answers. Well, that's because we haven't reduced it. Both 5 and 50 are divisible by 5. And I'm left with negative 1 tenth. Letter B is our answer. Okay. The amount of water in a tub varies directly with the amount of time you fill. What is true about the table given? Okay. The initial amount of water in the tub is 20 gallons. Now, initial amount represents the y-intercept. 
In this case, here it is. It's not 20. The rate of change is negative 4 minutes per, per gallon. That means decreasing by 4 as time increases. Okay, time is increasing. Good. No, the amount of water isn't decreasing by 4. It's actually increasing by 4. Letter C is our answer. Letter D is kind of silly, by the way, because we're filling the tub up. And it says four minutes, the tub is empty. So hopefully you don't even consider that answer. Thank you. Okay. In number 18, we need to identify the y-intercept using the table below. I mentioned the y-intercept just now. And maybe you were wondering what was so special about it. Well, if you take a look here, the y-intercept happens when x is zero. There it is. 19, we need to identify it graphically. Well, the y-axis is the one that goes up and down vertically, and the horizontal one is x. Here is our y-intercept. It's at 1. Whoa, beautiful. I got excited there, and I moved that by accident. Let's move on to the next page, cruising through. Cruising through the last problem of KC2. So in number 20, we need to identify the slope using the table below. We've actually just identified slope graphically when we were finding the rate of change between the point A and B. We're going to do the same thing here. We need to find out the change of Y's over the change in X's. Okay, well, the change in y's we have is minus 1. It's decreasing by 1. Okay, so negative 1. The change in x's, we're actually increasing by 3. As we go through the table, the numbers are getting larger. Negative one-third, letter D. And that is it for KC2. If you have any questions, make sure to ask your teachers or myself or any of your supervisory teachers. All right.